Today we're going to run through some of the muscles and facial expression. We're going to cover them on the model itself and then we have a uh, living subject that will demonstrate what those muscles actually do in, and keeping in mind they are facial expression. So we're not necessarily going to use real anatomical terms as to this elevates, this depresses, but more the terms that will be used you know, on, in street slang. Okay, so what we're going to do, we're going to start at the top of the skull. This muscle right here is known as the frontalis muscle. The frontalis muscle is also associated with a muscle in the back called the occipitalis muscle. Together they make up what is called the occipital frontalis muscle or the epicranius muscle. Um, the muscle is attached to the bone in the back and to the skin over the brow ridge in the front. So when you use this muscle, you can either move the skin of the scalp or generally it is used to raise the eyebrows and the forehead, such as you can see on our model. Then we go down from the uh, frontalis muscle and we can see circling the eye we have what is called the orbicularis oculi muscle. It has both a palpebral portion and an orbital portion. For purposes of this demonstration, we don't care about the two portions. This muscle is used to close the eye or anatomically speaking, narrow the palpebral fissure. So you can use it for closing your eye or for squinting as we can see on our model. And then one thing we don't see on this particular model is underneath the frontalis muscle right here and here, there would be two little muscles called the corrugator supercilii muscle. These muscles are used to pull the skin of the brow ridge down towards the nose, typically seen when somebody is frowning so we get a furrow at the top of the nose. Then as we move down into the cheek area, we have several muscles that we could talk about. The first one I want to discuss is called the levator labii superioris muscle. It's approximately right here on the model and it inserts into the skin around a muscle called the orbicularis oris that we'll talk about in a minute. But not at the very edge and not in the middle, but about halfway. So when you use this muscle, it will lift that upper lip, but again, not at the very edge of the mouth, not in the middle, but about halfway. So it results in basically what we call a sneer. All right, then if we look at the model very closely, we can see that there are some muscles running across the nose itself, and there are subdivisions of this muscle, but on this model we really can't see that. What we can see is what is called the nasalis muscle. The nasalis muscle is involved in helping you flare your nostrils. Then as we go down, we can see the muscle I referred to a little bit earlier circling around the mouth. The muscle is called the orbicularis oris muscle. Anatomically, we say that it closes the mouth. What it really does is it purse strings the lip shut and gives us a small pucker, as we can see on our model. Then the bulk of our cheek is made up of a muscle called the buccinator muscle. So on this side you can see buccinator pretty well. On the other side it's overlaid by another muscle we'll talk about in a minute. Buccinator muscle um, works as both a muscle of facial expression and a muscle of mastication. Its job in facial expression if you'll pardon the, the phrase, is to make a fish face. Um, in mastication, it pushes food back in toward the teeth. So we'll have our model to give us a good fish face. And then overlying the buccinator, you can't see it on this side of the model, but on this side of the model, you can see it's going straight back from the corner of the mouth, a muscle called the rhizorius muscle. This will retract the corners of your mouth, something that we all do when we say, hmm. Then, on the chin, there are two small muscles that come off of the mandible and head down forward into the skin overlying the chin. Those muscles are called the mentalis muscle, and what they do is they are activated when you pout. They will pull the skin of the chin tight against the chin and help bring the lower lip over and out, as we would see when somebody does a pout. Then we can see on the sides of the model, on this side, some superficial muscles. One is called the superior auricular muscle, the anterior auricular muscle, and the posterior auricular muscle. Those muscles are used to move the ear. Now one muscle that is not present on this model would be the platysma, and the platysma attaches all the way around the bottom of the mandible and forms a sheet like a veil on the deep side of our skin going down our neck into our 
clavicles and part of our sternum. This muscle tightens the skin in the neck, especially when you're giving a good grimace, as demonstrated by our model. Now, other muscles that we can talk about are muscles of mastication. On, the, on this side of the skull, I can see deeper than the auricular muscles that I just talked about, a very large muscle called the temporalis muscle. Temporalis muscle is a muscle of mastication, a muscle of chewing. It elevates the mandible. In street slang, we would say it is using for biting down. Okay, so it will elevate the mandible. And if we look on the other side of the model, at the very back of the cheek, just in front of the ear, covering over a big chunk of the mandible, we have a muscle called the masseter muscle. The masseter muscle is also a muscle for elevation of the mandible.